so hello everyone uh, welcome to this new video so today in this video uh, the topic which i'm going to discuss is very important uh, which with respect to the exam point of view it is uh, multiple times repeated so i would like each and every one to please uh, listen to this video very carefully and uh, try, try to watch this video till the end and please like this video before you watch okay the like the like if you want to like the video you should please uh, like it so let us discuss with the concept of power consumption okay so we are coming to the end of this module now so we are left with only few topics here the power consumption in that we are having two important types of power consumptions that is two primary component components that is static dissipation and dynamic power dissipation okay so these two concepts are very important multiple times repeated questions okay so that's why i thought to thought you to do do this power consumption in cmos circuits the total power dissipation arises from two primary components that is one is static dissipation and that is due to the leakage current and dynamic dissipation and that is due to the switching transient currents and charging and discharging of load capacitances okay first let us see with the static dissipation so for static dissipation again you should be considering the pmos and nmos transistors as a switches okay yeah so consider complementary cmos gate as shown in the figure here you see here we are considering a uh, one simple inverter as where the pmos and nmos transistors are acting as switches here so in the first case what we have is v in is equal to 0 and v out is equal to 1 okay so when v in is equal to 0 and v out is 1 the switch pmos which would be closed and nmos would be open okay and for v in is equal to 1 the pmos would be open and nmos would be closed okay so cmos inverter states for static dissipation calculation so when the input is at logic 0 that is when v in equal to 0 then mos is off and pmos is on that is nmos is off okay so here nmos is off that is uh, this is you know this switch is open pulling the output to the vdd okay since this is off so the output would be directly going towards vdd so that's why you would be getting the logic as logic 1 so that's why when the input is logic 1 that is when uh, v in is 1 the nmos is on and the pmos is off so see here the pmos switch is open pulling the output towards the ground vss that is you see here since the output is 0 so that's why the current would be flowing the current would be flowing like this towards vss and in this case the current would be flowing towards vdd okay so that's why it is 1 here and it is 0 here so in both states one transistor is off and there is no direct current path from vdd to vss okay so hence under ideal conditions the quiescent current that is the q current and the power dissipation are zero for ideal conditions however there exists a small leakage current due to the reverse bias junctions between the diffusion regions and the substrate okay so there is one simple model which illustrates these parasitic diodes on the cmos inverter here so the parasitic diodes are simply the diodes which are used to uh, handle the uh, uh, dope or doping concentration that is the electrons and holes with respect to the uh, p substrate or n substrate okay so here in this case it is n substrate so we are using the p well so for p well you should be having both the n plus and p plus ions so that's why we are considering the uh, diodes that is on all the four terminals okay the diode d1 models leakage from p from the p well to the substrate you see here the diode d1 models this d1 is a leakage from the p well to the uh, substrate so the reverse bias leakage current is modeled by the diode equation so the diode equation you all might be knowing it that is i0 is equal to is into e to the power qv by kt minus 1 so this equation you might be knowing it okay this is uh, not new to you all where is is the reverse saturation current v is the voltage across the diode q is the electronic charge k is the boltzmann constant and t is the temperature in kelvin okay so the static power dissipation the uh, general equation is given by ps is equal to summation where n uh, n is tending from 1 to n okay summation from 1 to n leakage current into vdd okay so the leakage current would be taking part here where n is the number of devices for example a typical static power dissipation due to leakage for an inverter operating at 5 volts is between 1 to 2 nanowatts okay after the if they have given some data here if this is 5 volts the answer answer for static power dissipation for a 
due to the leakage for an inverter it is 1 to 2 nanowatts okay so this was all about the static power dissipation so please note it down next we have one more important kind that is dynamic power dissipation okay so in static it was very easy but for dynamic you see the difference here when the output switches starts either from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 both nmos and pmos device conduct a brief conduct for a brief interval so the sentence means that for if uh, for static uh, power dissipation yeah, the inputs would be uh, input is 0 when uh, and if the input is 0 the output is 1 and if the input is 1 the output is 0 right but here in this case uh, the output when the output switches states that is either from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 both nmos and pmos devices conduct for a brief interval that is the conduction that that is that uh, the pmos and nmos won't be on or off state the both the transistors would be in the on state only okay only the logic would be getting changed uh, it would be following the inverter characteristics but the nmos and pmos transistor would be conducting for a brief interval that is they won't be in the off state okay they would be on forever so this causes a short duration current pulse from vdd to vss additionally the current is drawn to charge and discharge the load capacitance which is typically the dominant component of the dynamic power this short circuit power dissipation is important in io buffer design and is influenced by gate design and capacitance so you see here this graph is for the dynamic power dissipation here they have shown it here okay Assuming a step input with rise fall times much smaller than the petition period, the average dynamic power dissipation for a square wave input with frequency uh, as shown in the figure below is given by PD is equal to CLV square, uh, CL into VDD square into FP. Okay. So this is the equation for dynamic power dissipation where VDD is the supply voltage. CL is the load capacitance and FP is the switching frequency. Okay, so this in this way the dynamic power dissipation is defined. So this equation shows that dynamic power is proportional to both the capacitance and the square of the supply voltage and it increases linearly with the uh, given frequency that is the switching frequency. Note that it is independent of transistor parameters that is whatever the transistor parameters we have it would be independent of that that is a uh, it won't be uh, linked with any other parameters of the transistor okay so here the square wave illustration of dynamic power dissipation you see here so when the signal is high so uh, there would be the dissipation happening that is from high to low okay and when the signal is uh, stand, uh, dropping from high to low that is again the dissipation would be taking place that is from low to high and the same way so where the changes is taking place so that tf is mentioned as the all time and here this is the waveform for the dynamic power dissipation okay so waveforms for determination determination of dynamic power dissipation with respect to the change in the logic that is from from firstly it was zero then it changes from low to high so that is from vdd it falls down to zero okay where similarly here you see here it would be drastic from uh, high to low so that's why it is falling from uh, so, so it was initially low now it is moving towards high and then it is a constant zero so here also it's constant and it changes accordingly okay so the total power dissipation now is the sum of static power dissipation and the dynamic power dissipation that is p total is given by ps plus pd okay so this is the total power dissipation if you want to calculate the total power dissipation you should be knowing the static as well as dynamic power dissipations then only you could be calculating the total power dissipation okay so these are some of the numericals with respect to the uh, formulas which have, we have discussed okay so these things are not, i'm not going to cover so this would be available in the description these notes you should you go and uh, see these problems okay yeah so yeah that's all guys uh, this was the thing we have uh, I, I wanted to discuss about the power consumption because uh, this is a very important concept and this would be appearing for the exam as well okay yeah, so that's all for the video guys. Thank you for watching till here. Like, share, subscribe to our channel. Keep supporting us. Thank you.